What's up, everybody? My name is Bryce, aka Jobs.Subs, and in today's video, we're back with another podcast. I hope you all are doing very well. I hope we're all having a decent time, you know, within the conditions, have the best time we possibly can, you know, make do with what you have. I've been doing good, you know, just online classes. It's just winding down to an end, actually, pretty close. Uh, end of May, it has to be. I think I have a class ending this week, and uh, I'm getting close to the end on some of my other classes, but overall, just been chilling. I've been, you know, Island classes, reading a manga, doing my thing. But yeah, we got a lot of stuff to get into today. Or yeah, today. I was gonna say this today from this week, from last week. But we got some stuff right here. You see, first off, we have something with the Tezuka con contest that I want to get into. We got a new anime movie coming out in June, I believe. We have the new manga releases for the month and a little bit of stuff that's from me to you that we get to find out about. But without further ado, let's hop on to our first story, and that is the hundredth annual Tezuka Manga Award, the hundredth an anniversary special for it. So I wonder, this is 100 years old now, that's crazy, so it started off in 1920, I guess, is when the Tezuka Award, or maybe I'm, I, that can't, that can't be, I can't be wrong about that, right? Maybe, <laughs> don't, I, I can't, it has to be 1920, right? I mean, for 100, and, yeah, god, why am I, I'm losing it, man, staying inside this house is so crazy, but anyway, as there's, like, one specific thing I want to get into, is because obviously they had this every year, so it's nothing special, but there's one thing that is specifically really, really crazy about this, and that is they're doing an international submission ability, so basically, if you're from America, Spain, or anywhere else in the world, you can submit your own manga that could end up be go be end up going into shonen jump so let's read this right here so well first i'll read you what the tezuka contest is so you so for those of you who don't know what it is it, i can explain it to you but here we go it is a manga award for new artists established by shonen jump by sexual publishers since 1971 with the aim of finding new talents the prize is named after osama tezuka who was a pioneer in the manga history after the war many professional manga artists who still work the who still work this day were found through this award. The contest is held twice a year and is this time will be the 100th anniversary. So if it's two and two times, do they count each one? So it could be 50 years old? I don't know. It's not really important, but basically the international thing. So here it is. Here's the contest about it. You can submit from any language. You got. I'll get the judges right here in a second. And there's some amazing judges. They always have some major, amazing judges. But as you can see, first prize, 2 million yen, which I think is like, it's got to be two thousand dollars it's got to be more than two thousand dollars i'd have to look it up exactly how much it is because i don't know exactly convertible like converting but look at the, the second prize is one million and then to get third place basically is five hundred thousand yen and it's so cool but in the end if you win you get to go to the tokyo you get to go to tokyo and get go to the thing which would be absolutely mind-blowing if an american artist won and here we are, here are the judges, we got Akihira Toriyama from Dragon Ball, Ichiro Oda from One Piece, Ka Kazoe Kaito from Blue Exorcist, Kohei Ishikori from My Hero Academia, Takehiko Inoue from Slam Dunk, Ryo, and Vagabond, and then Tezuka Productions. That's a star-studded thing. I, I mean, obviously, Dragon Ball... One Piece, and My Hero Academia, and uh, Slam Dunk, and Vagabond and stuff, probably the biggest ones. Kaizu Kaido is amazing in her own right, and she has one of my favorite manga. Blue Exorcist is absolutely fantastic, but I mean, if we're going to talk about popularity-wise and the most popular, it's obviously these four right here. But that's amazing. This is so cool that, like, that, Amer that Americans, Span uh, like, people from Spain, people from Mexico, anywhere can submit manga now. So basically, the, here's are the quotes from the judges. You could go and check that out if you want to read them. But here are the prizes and in, invitation for first and second. Oh, no, you get invited for any. That's actually really cool. They, obviously, I don't think they're going to pay for you. You'd have to fly out yourself. And I don't know how they would, when they'd have that ceremony, especially with, like, the virus right now. So I don't know when that's out. But this is going to September 1st. So make sure to submit yours before September 1st if you want to. Uh, I'll go down more. There are the rules that I'll get into. Here's how you can submit it. You go, you draw your manga, check the box next to the thing. This is on the mediabang.com uh, right here, right up here through the URL. I'll try to leave it in the description if you guys want to try to, you know, submit your thing. Uh, submit for participant form, submit art. There's more, it's more detailed right here, and I'm not going to really get into all that, but here you go, that's how you... Media Bank translate it for you, so you don't have to worry about like if writing in English and then be like, oh man, they're not going to understand it. It's going to get translated for you, which is absolutely amazing. Here you go. Here it is. May first to September first. So that you have a lot of time to get it done, get those pages, and I believe, yep, up to fifty-five. It also has to be complete, like one complete story. Uh, right here. It can be any genre, but it must be completed in one issue that is original. So it has to be your own story. It has to be condensed into one thing. Don't have it, like, leave off on a cliffhanger. Up to 50, 55 pages. Monochrome, basic, shown in jump stuff. This is so cool, though, that American people get America, any other international person... 
gets to submit in this and has the potential to win. It's so that's so cool. There's the, okay. Yes, the enter. You got it on the bottom. You can enter there. But if you actually go all the way up to the top, you can actually see there are already submissions, which is we're, we're only four days into it. But there are like a decent amount of like uh, of submissions for America. I mean, in in all honesty, they're not like too great. I haven't read them all, but just based on all of the like art, I don't see really any of these too, doing too well. But I think it's awesome that they're submitting, and I hope nothing for the best. And again. I don't know anything about it, so I could be completely wrong. I haven't even read any of them. And this is the only one I've read, which is, it's good. The art's, like, okay. But the thing is, this is way too dark for Shonen Jump. This is, like, very, very, like, it's, like, straight-up horror. It is weird that they, I mean, straight, like, Chainsaw Man's really dark and gory and, and horror. So is Promised Neverland. So, you know, only the only the judges can tell. But I don't think this one's going to... That's the, this is the only one I've read, but this I don't think is really going to win. But here you go. You can see all the other languages you can submit in right there. And it gets translated for you. You don't have to worry about it. But yeah, I, this is actually really cool. I can't wait to see how this goes. I'm going to check the submissions throughout it. And if I actually see anything like any like really cool su submissions, I might even make a video on it or talk about it in the podcast later on. Just to, like check it out. Because it's cool that you get to like read and see like all these other people's like art. Uh, oh, you, okay. It even has likes next to it to see like which ones are like really good or not. 70. See, I did. This one stuck out to me. It has definitely has the most unique cover and like pulls you in the best out of all of them. At least that's the, for me. That one and this one did. But this also looks like the, uh, what's it called? It looks like that time I got reincarnated as a slime. But anyway, submit if you want to. This would be awesome. And I, I, I'm excited to see, read you guys' work because I will be checking this out throughout it. Please submit it. This would be so cool to see if, like, somebody, like, uh, that was, like, I knew or, like, one of you guys won this. That Wouldn't that be crazy you go out to Japan, go to Shonen Jump headquarters and meet, like, some of the best manga artists ever and, like, get celebrated for your manga? That would be so cool. But so submit it. Definitely. It, it doesn't hurt. It's free. So go for it. But anyway, we are going to get into our next topic, and that is that real we have right here, Guardian of the Witch is getting a Volume 1 release, which is, this one is quickly heading out the door, in my opinion. TLC has it at the very, very bottom. I don't see it doing well at all, and I don't really see it lasting either. I just wanted to show you guys that Volume 1 was going to come out. They're probably trying to, like, rush it and see how sales are going to do, and this is basically going to decide whether it lives or dies, and something tells me it's not going to do too well. It's not going to do a job protecting this series, that's for sure. But anyway, next up, we're going to get into Tentai Books, which is previously a Spanish publisher. They are going to go into English release, right? Uh, English releases with their light novels. And we have four light novels that are going to get released by them. And so first up, we have There's No Way a Side Character Like Me Could Be Popular, right? Then next up, we have Senpai Will You Be My Boyfriend. Then we have Welcome to the Diner of the Exiled. And then lastly, we have, whoa, Vigo, you bastard, consider yourself banned from my diner. Please tell me that's not the actual thing. Okay, Yuki and Kimakawa and Goa's Welcome to the Diner of the Exiled. Oh, wait, are these the same thing? Okay, that, oh, it's two. Oh, whoa, that shows how much, like, I didn't, I, I thought these were covered, but yeah, okay. This is, okay, so they have two, my bad. This is this one, and this is a preview of it. Damn, I can't believe, <laughs> I can't believe that guy did that. And then that's this one, that's this one, and that's a preview of it. Obviously, it's a light novel, so there's not going to be a lot of pictures, so, you know. But I'm not going to read these because I'm not really into light novels, to be honest. I just wanted to tell you guys about it. If you're into light novels, check it out. I feel like this is also like a, um, what is it? A psych, not a psych character's love story. She looks similar to somebody else. I can't remember. It's another light novel. Then this one also is like, there's like a ton of like, there's what? Restaurant in another world. There's Welcome to the Dungeon. There's, uh, there's another one too. That's another restaurant in another world. That's like basically a restaurant to another world, but has like a different title. But there's so many ED ones that are just basically the same. I don't know what it's about, obviously. So it could be vastly different. I just know by the titles and the concept, they seem very similar. Again, I'm going to skip on just because I'm not like, too big a fan of light novels. I want to read Torture Princess. It's the only light novel right now. I'm concurrent. Like, I want to really read. I have volume one. I just need to sit down and dedicate myself to actually reading it. But I'm a lazy bastard and I can't <laughs> follow through on anything. And I really want to read it. I really, really do. And I need to get to it because I love the manga. I read the manga and it really pulled me in. I thought this was like a really cool concept and it seemed really dark and really interesting. So I'm going to read Torture Princess and I will come out with a review, hopefully, at some point 
if I'm not lazy and I can actually like <laughs> do it. But anyway, next up we're gonna get into my anime list. Actually released the numbers for spring twenty so far. Is it where about? I well, I think we're almost like halfway through the season, which is crazy. Although most of the things are getting canceled right now, or I mean not canceled, delayed. So I mean keep this with. I don't think this really affected like these overall scores and stuff. But we'll let's just get into it real quick. Right now there I'm gonna cover the four. There's score, popularity, drop rate, and something else. I forgot what the fourth one is, but I'm going to cover the first four, and let's see what the best are and the worst are. Got my water, putting it down now. Like, I, if you see, like, those awkward pauses, it's because I'm getting a drink. When you talk for, like, an hour like this for so long, it just starts to get to you. Like, <laughs> your throat gets really dry. But anyway, we're going to start off with number one for the best score, and I don't think anyone's surprised that Kaguya-sama did get number one. 8.78, that's not bad at all. I mean, it's a fantastic series. I think it's staying strong. It's weird, though. I can see... Uh, not, not Shinomiya. Who's the guy character? The guy... Uh, why did I forget his name? Uh, but basically, the other main character for this kind of seems like he's taking a back seat so far in the series, which seems a little strange to me. It's like, it's really focused on Shinomi right now, but right now, also, we're getting a transition to where he is also going to be the main focus. At, with, with the last episode, it really seemed like they're going to transition to more of he's going to be the main person now, and which is fine. It just seemed like a really, little weird at the beginning that he kind of felt like a little bit of a side character and a plot point for Shinomiya. I don't know. It was still fantastic. It just felt a little, like, off when I did it, because I, at least from what I remember from the first one it was like always them like right next to each other like hand in hand with like their lines and like screen time and stuff but it felt like Shinomiya got more at the beginning of this I don't know if that could just be remembering it wrong and like I just making something out of nothing but anyway next up we have Kingdom I never watched Kingdom people love Kingdom so I don't I'm not surprised that this is doing well Fruit Basket second, second season I love Fruit Basket I'm actually a little I don't I think it's delayed right now so I don't know if there's actually any new episodes up I can actually check right now while I'm actually talking about this but I think at the moment it is currently delayed so while we're doing that let's Get, jump onto the next one and the next one is a sentence of a bookworm which i'm like I, I haven't watched but apparently people like but but the people who watch it seem to like really enjoy it so you know good on them i'm not i don't hate because i've never read it and it's not it doesn't really seem like a me like a thing for me basically it's an isekai where a girl gets teleported to another world and just wants to read and pretty much do nothing else which is a didn't really interest me as a concept as a concept but anyway next up we have uh kami no to which is tower of god and i do think this is actually like really solid i do like the animation i think it's pretty good i do enjoy it uh i'm saying i would think it's maybe a little bit overrated i do agree with this score maybe a 7.5 not a 7.8 but overall i do think it's a solid series and something i definitely don't hate and i do think i can see where a lot of the enjoyment comes from so but i am more excited actually for uh, not Tower. This is Tower of God. Uh, the God of High School by Mappa. That looks insane. This looks like over the top shown in greatness. Uh, Shokiki no Soma. I don't know exactly what that one is, to be honest. I'm not really too good with Japanese titles. Uh, yesterday, well, Yutate, that is, uh, Sing Yesterday for me. And this is absolutely fantastic. Me and Neon love this series. We talk about it all the time. Like, every time an episode comes out, we're like, episode, th ep this episode's out. And then we talk about it later on. It's so, so good. I love it. I, I think, I think neon is enjoying it too i believe uh zells is also watching it so all three of us are just basically talking about it and having a good time with it it's a great gr series and it's like i 100 percent recommend it basically it's about revolving around four characters for the most part and they have other characters like there's four main there's two main characters and then you have the side characters but it basically revolves around four characters and their lives and what it's like for them to grow up you have two high schoolers and two adults and they're all experiencing different things with like with growing up coming to terms with themselves, boss. There's a lot of things that this entails, and it's a fantastic slice of life drama, and I love it to death. It's so good. The music is so good. The animation is good. The art style is great. The characters are lovable. So much relatability to them. It's so, so good. But let me see. Yeah, okay, so episode three came out, but what day did it come out oh it doesn't have a date on it that sucks but anyway episode three is out for fruit basket so i don't know if it got stopped after episode episode three or not but is there any other ones that are really notable on here first off glepner y'all are hating on glepner i'm just saying it's fantastic i don't know why it's so it's got such a bad rating it's at least a seven at, at the very least you got it's got to be a seven i mean come on it deserves more than a 6.8 and and Appa Ron, man that's also fantastic. I believe this one also deserves better than a 7. I do think... I, I don't know if it's better than Glepner, you know, because Glepner's absolutely amazing. But uh, Alpa Ramen's, like, has a really cool concept. I can get why it's only 7 right now, because it really hasn't got into, like, the good parts yet. And it is delayed right now, so you're not really going to see 
the better parts of Apar Ranman yet. But basically, Apar Ranman is the is a transcontinental race across America. It's so cool. I'm really interested to see where it's going to go. The animation is really good. It's done by PA Works. I love the art. The intro, the outro is really great. Intro and ending. Uh, opening and ending. I mean, you call it whatever you want. They're the same thing. Uh, art is okay. I kind of... I thought it was okay. I didn't really... I, I think it's I, it just didn't interest me as weird Kakashi Goto I think is a really big lockdown I thought that was a very boring series all right let's quickly go over what the worst are real quick so you have Tamayomi which is basically a baseball anime I believe it's like an all girls baseball anime I have not I haven't watched it I didn't check it out uh next up we have Gail the Dino I believe or like it's like it's like Gal Dino or something like that in English, and it's a very, very strange series. You wouldn't think... Basically, this Gal just has a dino in his house, and it's a comedy series, and it's very, very wacky. There's a... Literally, in the first episode... I only watched the thir first episode, and I dropped it afterwards. But the first episode literally has, her, like, the dinosaur sitting there and letting a cup of ramen or something like this air out for two minutes straight i swear to god he just sits there and nothing happens and we just watch it air and there's a timer on the bottom and i sat there for two minutes thinking something was going to happen and nothing happened he just sat there silently as this thing cooled down before he ate it it was the stupidest thing i've ever seen and i haven't seen any of the rest of these so i can't speak on those but my god that was the stupidest thing i've ever watched and the biggest waste of time that i've ever seen I mean, it's kind of, it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't really funny either, to be honest. But anyway, next up, let's get into the popularity category. This is basically the current members on my anime list, my anime list watching. So, you know, this is all you got a grain of salt. This is obviously the my anime list viewership. So, you know, you got to take that with a grain of salt and what people taste are. Because obviously with any group, you just have, everything is like, the tasting is like very specific uh specific because they the group very, usually trend on the or like sites i guess in a way trend to like have groups in them that usually all like similar things but my animal list is overall very there's like what probably one of the more most diverse places but i do think there's like a bias on certain so shows that they like but anyway next up not next up let's get into this again kagura-sama not no surprise second season was massively popular makes no sense i mean makes a lot of sense next up tower of god again another one that makes a lot of sense the next up is what is this one? Oh, food wars that's again another very established series so this all makes sense my boy glepner my boy glepner you damn right people are watching it even gigak talks about it so that probably boosted it a lot it's a fantastic series i think pine jam's actually doing a pretty decent job at animating it and i was very worried about it before but they're doing a great job and fifth Yes, sing for me. You sing yesterday for me, which is honestly my favorite show of the season. This is like absolutely fantastic. It's blowing me away. I don't, I'm not actually watching Gleipner just because I'm reading the manga. I'm not really a manga and anime uh, watcher and reader. I usually just pick one. But sing yesterday for me is definitely my favorite of the season. I'm happy that it's top five. That's absolutely like, really cool. I can't believe Gakko Shigoto is number seven. That's just like I don't get it, man. I it just wasn't that good. It just wasn't that good to me. I, I maybe other people enjoy the. It just missed for me, and I'm usually okay with Slice of Life and, like, slower series. It just never really felt funny to me, and it just was, like, very slow paced. And the art for the manga was just not even that good. It was, like, mid at best. Uh, what's next? 24,000 people watching Fruit Basket. Not bad. I love Fruit Basket. Alpha Round Man. Oh, nice. It got top 10. I'm happy about that. Is any other one significant? Let's see what's in the lowest. Kingdom third season only has 4,000, it got top... See, there's like that's what happens when you have like a curated thing like that. Once people start established, once you have like an established series, it's very easy to get a higher rank because obviously, when people are watching the like a third season, it's gonna get a I feel, like the established viewers are there and the people who enjoy it, so they're gonna rate it higher than someone who hasn't seen it before. So as the third season comes up, it's gonna get a higher score. Anyway, that's just my propaganda piece. It wasn't the worst one. Uh, these are all like I've never heard, and obviously that's probably why nobody's watching it. So yeah, there's like really nothing like too significant about that wait how come okay four thousand this has seven thousand why does this have i'm in i'm okay now i'm confused about the rank. okay oh okay so it's going 16 wow that is weird how they because it goes 30 here and then they start high up here it's just the organization it's a bit weird excuse me anyway next up we're gonna leave the interest and this is the watching members versus total members before airing so basically after the show starts how many people added on to it so after this show start after tower of god started we got 142 percent increase that's pretty cool i i think tower of god's actually pretty solid fuku balance that makes sense because that like he was trending on twitter for a while this uh daisuke i believe his name is was trending right when that first episode come came out 
Princess Connect. Don't even know what this is. Thing from yesterday. Solid. Glad more people are checking that out. And then art got a 100% increase. And, you know, not bad. Uh, what's the worst one? Well, I got dropped right after. Tamioma got dropped by 60. It went down 61%. Wow, that's like a harsh drop. Uh, what other ones has, like, a good increase? So, what did any of these? Kakashi Goto got a decent increase. Listeners got a decent. Listeners kind of overrated, in my opinion. I think. I think it's a decent mecha, but I don't think it's anything special. Uh, is there anything that dropped a lot? So, I think these are the ones that went up, maybe? And then these are the ones that went down? I'm not exactly sure, so I'm not... Oh, sequels. Okay, so sequels are right here, and that's their percentage. But anyway, last up, we're going to get into the drop, I believe. Yeah, I'm not going to go any deeper than this. It's going to get too much. Okay, so what's the... How many people dropped it? So, basically, the best is you want the lowest number of drops, and obviously... It, the best series out here seeing yesterday for me because people who lo watch it love it because it's amazing and once you actually like get into it you can see how great it is then you have tower of god which is actually pretty solid i'm not gonna drop it i actually very much enjoyed it otome game what is a tome game i'm trying to look at the picture and see if i oh oh my um it's my i got reincarnated as a villainous and all route lead to doom my same i believe it is an isekai where a girl basically goes into an otome game and She's a she becomes the villain and she's trying to not die because I think at the end of the game the villain dies no matter what and she's basically trying to find a ending where she doesn't die and then Kakashi Gota people are keeping that up I didn't even start it so I can't drop it but and then Balance Blade Work Unlimited again people really love that series so people are probably gonna stick out with it then we have Art not having the low drop rate that's nice that's one point under two percent Gleipner not a bad drop rate two point seven that's not bad Opera Rodman again another not bad one but what's the worst one what I don't know what that is Gal the Gal has a twenty percent drop rate and then number one i don't even know what that series is tamayoma is still on there for i'm not tamayoma was apparently a big letdown I, I just keep seeing that but anyway that is all the mail stuff you know take that with a grain of salt it's just nice to keep, see like what's doing well and what's not obviously i think it's pretty obvious what series we're gonna do really good and what series we're gonna do really bad but without further ado we're gonna get into our next thing and that is the anime movie that is gonna be coming out on netflix worldwide on june 18th so that means everyone is going to be able to see it on june 18th so let's get into the article the staff studio Col uh colorido with seconds feature length film and uh whiskers away i'm not gonna read that in japanese or want or wanted to cry i pretend to be a cat announced on thursday that the film will debut exclusively on netflix worldwide on june 18th the film was slated to open in japan on june 5th but was delayed due to the new coronavirus disease the staff also unveiled a new trailer and there's stills okay so where are the stills let's get into the stills i think this looks actually like really well animated i cannot wait to actually see what this is going to be and i'm going to get into why i think this is like why it's going to be so good so let's read the i i think this is the description so let's read the description real quick the original story about one's finding true self is set in tokoname achi and centers around mio muge sakasi sakaki she is a peculiar second year junior high student who has fallen in love with her classmate kento hinode muge resolutely 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 pursues hinode every day but he takes no notice of her nevertheless while carrying a secret she can tell no one mu continues to pursue hinode mu muge i i cannot say i don't know how to pronounce that so just mug i'm gonna call her mug mug discovers a, <laughs> a new magic mask that allows her to transform into a cat named taru the magic lets mug get close to hinode but eventually it may also make her unable to transform back into a human so this means this story is basically about a girl who falls in love with a guy but the guy basically it only really gives attention to cats or he really likes cats and so to become a she becomes a cat so that she can get the attention of this guy that she is falling in love with so, and wants to be close to in any way possible but as you can see the catch is she might not turn back into human but here's the catcher this is a marie okada film and if you guys don't know who, who marie okada is she is the writer for anahana when the promise power blooms makia makia uh what is it what's the rest of it makia it's another it's not when the promise follow you Ma, makia and the i'm gonna look this up real quick because i i'm like actually like really mad that i can't remember the full name makia can i spell it right makia anime <laughs> i can't even spell it damn right i'm falling apart dude makia i did okay I, well, I was right the first time damn it uh what's the full name when the promised flower blooms so what's anohana uh, the flower oh anohana the flowers we saw that day that's what it is i was like man why can't i figure this out 
But anyway, that oh, that's why I messed up. Uh, so it is Makia when the promised flower bloom, and then it's Anohana, the flowers we saw that day. And then now, and you also have O Maidens in Your Savage Season. There's a lot of flower themes, because even O Maidens in Your Savage Season has a lot of, like, flowery covers on, like, flowers on the cover. But that one's more, like, based on, like, classic literature. And the, the, another fantastic manga. Read it if you haven't got the chance. That is uh, O Maidens in Your Savage Season, if you didn't hear that. And then uh, Makia, When the Promised Valor Blooms, is my second favorite anime movie. And my uh, it also contends for number one. I love it so much. That and uh, A Silent Voice, those are my top two films. And I think they're absolutely fantastic. They're so 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 well done and Mercury Okada blows me away with everything she's done even the uh even one of her early earlier works it was I'm not gonna remember what it is but it's basically it's still not it's a, just a lot of her stuff revolves around slice of life stuff but also kind of has that you know it has that kind of supernatural touch in it like uh, a lot of Makoto Shinkai stuff like your name and weather in you where there's like that supernatural thing so this one allows magic to turn into a cat Makia is like about a girl one of the characters who can live forever then there is uh, Anohana, obviously. I don't want to spoil what goes on in that, but you know if you've seen it. But I really love her work. So there's a lot of stuff about growing up, a lot of stuff about acceptance, learning to love yourself, overcoming adversity. There's a lot of things that Marie Okada covers that are very well done. Studio Colorado looks like they're going to animate it very well. Uh, there's pretty good voice actors in here. Uh, Marie Shinda, Secret World of Already. She was uh, she was Already. The Wind Rises. I don't know who that character is. Melissa Shield from the movie. So, you know, there's, she actually has some, like, different, decent uh, names or, like, people in there. Demon Slayer. Okay, so you have Natsuki Hane from Demon Slayer. Everyone knows Tanjiro. So, you know, big name right there. And then uh, Disastrous Life of Sakaki, which is the Netflix series. There's a lot of other characters that are going here that I don't really know who they are. But this is actually going to be... Fans and the flowers we saw that day. Okay, I was kind of wrong, Ben. Oh, man, I should have just looked down here and I wouldn't have to look like such an idiot. Okay, Studio Colorado also did Typhoon Nord. Penguin Highway, fantastic film. If you guys have not seen Penguin Highway, it's abs it's really underrated. I love that movie. It's a very, it's a very, very good movie and it's animated really well. It's very enjoyable throughout and I really enjoyed Penguin Highway. But this film is going to be great. I cannot wait for this. I'm so, so excited. And we finally get to see a movie. It's so good. And then later on, there's another movie that actually come came out and I will tell you about that from the from me to you section i'll tell you how you can actually watch that but this is absolutely i cannot wait for this i think this is going to be really good but anyway next up we're going to get into all the releases of manga and like a little bit spe there's like one special series which i'll get into the next one and that is a it's like it's a director's thing you'll see it in a second but we're going to get into all the may releases of this month and we're going to start off with The Girl with Sampoku Eyes. And basically, I thought there was something like weird. I thought she had like different color eyes or something. But basically, all this means is the Sampoku Eyes. That basically is base is when your pupils... A lot of, If you go look in the mirror and you look straight at the mirror, most people will have pupils like on the top and bottom. You won't be able to see the white of the eye. But with people with Sampoku Eyes, their eyes are smaller. And you can actually see the, the white all the way around their eye. Like, uh, like everywhere around it. So basically, all they have is like slightly smaller pupils. And I was like, that's it? That's the only concept to this? And it's a romance... It's a romance comedy, I believe. I believe it's a rom-com, but... It's, I don't know. I, I'm, ex I'm definitely interested to see it. I'm going to check it out. But anyway, let's read the, what the anime, not the anime, what the synopsis is. Uh, Abane Mizono is struggling with her social life. To her friends and family, she's a shy and diligent girl. But to her classmate, her face scale, screams intense, mean, and maybe standoffish. So when Amin, Aname, Am, Amine falls for her classmate, Kato, for her whole world seems to get flustered and agitated. It just seems like a nice rom-com. I'm interested to see what this is. It's a nice indie title, but I'm excited to see where this goes, and uh, I'm going to check this one out. I already have it pre-ordered, so I'll let you guys know. you probably get a review out once that actually comes out. But anyway, next up, this is what I was talking about, is the Parasite graphic novel storyboard. It is basically, I believe, let, let me just actually read the thing so I don't sound stupid. Uh, we, okay, as part of his unique process, Dr. Boon Joon Ho bo storyboarded each shot of Parasite prior to filming every scene. Accompanied by the film's dialogue, the storyboards he drew captured the story in its entirety. D Director Bong 
also written a also written a four a four wood man i am like falling apart i always start so well with like reading and then like as it goes on i just get more tired <laughs> more tired and i just start slipping up okay but anyway i provided early concept drawings and photos from the set which take the reader even deeper into the vision they gave rise to this stunning cinematic achievement basically there's a lot of illustrating there's a lot of illustrating storyboarding and like there's really cool stuff I'm, i already had this pre-ordered this is so cool i cannot wait to do it parasite was my favorite movie of last year is so good if you guys have not seen paradise parasite what are you doing it is so good it is one of the best movies i've ever watched it blew me away watching it there's so many there's so well written and it's so fantastic every part about this is so so good i love parasite and i cannot wait to check out the storyboard i actually got a poster for it from amazon before this whole thing happened and they lost my package i think someone stole my package and stole my wallpaper or not my wallpaper my poster and i was i'm like really mad about that because i really wanted that poster but anyway, next up we have Ping Pong, which is Uchu selves like probably blowing <laughs> his load right now because he, he's so happy to hear that Ping Pong's coming out. I know nothing about Ping Pong. It's a Tayo Matsumoto, I believe that's his name. The artist name is it not on here? Tayo Matsumoto, that's what it is. Okay, so is this the okay okay here's the synopsis makoto smiles sukamoto doesn't smile even though he's got a natural talent for playing ping pong as one of the best players in school all hopes are on him to win with, with win the regional high school tournament but winning is not what smile really wants to do with a fierce competition to be i didn't know there was actually more to be number one bring out the best or drive him away from the game ping pong is tayo matsumoto's master work reflection Masterwork reflection of on friendship and self-discovery presented here in two volumes featuring color art and bonus story Tamara and an afterward and afterward by the original Japanese series editor. It'll be cool. I'm excited to see what this is going to be. I'm only checking this. I'm really only checking this out because Zach talks about it all the time and he's how like Tayo Matsumoto is his favorite artist. So I'm only checking out for him. I'm more interested actually in Sunny by the same artist and that's out of print, but I do want to find that at some point and actually read that all. But I'm excited to see this one. I hope it's good. I already have it pre-ordered. I'm excited to see where it actually goes and if it's actually any good. So that's Ping Pong Volume 1. And like I said, it's going to be two volumes long. And I can't wait to read it. Anyway, next up we have The Kingdom of the Gods. And this, if you guys see in the Netflix adaptation, there's a live-action Netflix adaptation of it. This is the original one of it. So right here, Netflix original zombie series. But anyway, the synopsis goes, Years of War Famine had... Years of war and famine had plunged jo Josin into chaos. The young prince, y Yi Moon, having lost all his bodyguards to an assassin attempt, assassination attempt, has no choice but to turn to the mountain bandit, Jai Ha, for help. But as, unlikely pair, as the unlikely pair race to find safety in the world gone mad, it becomes horrifyingly clear that humans aren't the only thing they must fear. Basically, it just seems like a... Uh, a zombie survival story i don't think i'm going to check this out i probably will skip on it with all the stuff other stuff coming out it's just it probably is going to be good i've never i haven't seen the netflix adaptation so i'm not really anything like too pulled in on this idea and i don't really know how just like what the whole concept or what they're like what the future is even going to hold for like the series it just sounds like they're trying to survive i don't know if they're going to try to rebuild the kingdom rebuild the humanity i really don't know what's going on anything besides like that synopsis i just read i will probably most likely skip on the series the cover seems like really engaging and really cool but i mean it, it could be good and it's just i don't know if i'm gonna enjoy i probably would enjoy if i read it but i don't need more volumes i need to just stick with the stuff i'm reading right now and finish that but anyway, this seems, yeah, this is our last one. This is probably the thing I'm most excited for for this month because it, like, I just off the sheer curiosity of what this is, and I'm kind of, I'm, like, really, really interested to see what this series is going to entail and how they're going to do it. And this is called Not Your Idol. And the synopsis goes... A, psych a psychological suspense series about a girl who has given up on her life as an idol after she became after she was assaulted by a fan. After that day, she stopped being a girl. In the wake of an assault, Nina Kam Kamiyama... A former idol in the group pure club in the in the group pure club shuns her femininity and dress starts dressing as a boy at a high school she keeps to her at, at the high school she keeps to herself but fellow student Hikara Horichi realizes who she is what secrets is she keeping the shocking drama starts starts so I'm really interested to see what this is because obviously there's all it's gonna show the darker side of idol idol culture which is something I've been like strangely interested to see like what that's like and how people would portray that because i do think i do always have like this in my mind that people tend to worship celebrities too much and tend to believe them and like put them on the highest, highest pedestal to a point when i don't think that they deserve to be on and i also think it puts too much pressure on that person and also could make them feel entitled and give them that like ego boost that shouldn't e they shouldn't even really have but 
I'm interested to see like the darkest side of idol culture because I think specifically in Japan, people really are really, really into their idols, like to the point where like they kind of like low key worship these people. And I just like the concept of showing the kind of darker side of the idol industry because I'm interested to see what that's like. I'm kind of running in circles, but it, it's just such a cool concept. Like the what if I could go to Bokudan. If my favorite pop idol could go to Bogodan, I could die. That was a series that came out last season. And I really thought it was going to be like a happy sugar life of the of the idol thing. I thought it was going to be about the super crazed fan who was going to try to sacrifice everything. And try to make, no matter what, get this girl to like this concert. No matter how she had to kill, who she had to kill, who she had to blackmail, who she had to like take advantage of to get this person on that pedestal. And I, I was really intrigued by that concept. I thought that would be like a really, really cool concept for an anime and i thought it'd be really cool for like the darker side of Japan, like idol culture and i don't know for me like that concept was really cool and i don't know i was very disappointed about how, how that series actually ended up and turned out but this series right here is not going to be dark it doesn't seem like a dark it seems like it's going to be serious but i'm interested to see how she's going to grow and recover from this overcome that like popularity boom that like really overwhelmed her and yeah i'm just excited to see what this series is going to entail and now we're going to head on to our last segment and that is from me to you or something a little special just for me to you so first up we have manga plan i was actually going to include some of the series that are coming out and i believe may 20th and 21st there's going to be a series um and on that day that and the town and yet the town moves it's basically it's by the same person who does heavy delusion released by dimpa and i'm just interested to it because it's a sci-fi series that really caught my intrigue and then there is bochi's sun can rock that's coming out on the 21st and I'm really interested to see that because Bochi has fantastic art and I'm in really interested to see that. But basically, what I want to get into is that for the entire month of May, if you have, all you have to do is sign up for a free account. I don't think you have to buy, you don't have to sign up for a subscription. I have not actually like opened up a book to check out yet. But from what I know, all you have to do is sign up on the, uh, make an account on here, like a free account. And you get to read all their entire collection for free for the entire month of May. And I'm actually like very interested in some of these titles because I really like the covers and they also seem very like underground and really interesting like after school like it has this like kawaii girl right here but it's it's like there's so this is such a cool series because what it, what it's actually about is like these kids are in an underground shelter and they go in, out and explore the vast way like the vast like radiation like uh apocalyptic world that's like left and i'm super excited to actually, actually now that i can read this and check this out then you have other series that like basically a lot of these covers really interest me uh which one's also interesting this one kind of interests me i like the art kind of i love watercolor so that always interests me and this is not, they don't have like a huge library but i mean it's free so check it out if you want to check it out it's free manga planet it's an uh, it's a laptop only site or not a laptop only it's a web browser only site so i believe you could also use your phone i wish they'd make an app i think it'd greatly help them to make an app for this and but yeah this is absolutely fantastic i cannot wait to check out some of these like chilling messages this one also seems like uh, silk weaver's apprentice seems like a nice slice of life i can't wait to read this i think this is gonna actually be like really cool and it's free so i'm gonna check out these series and if there's anything good you might see me even be seeing a review on it so anyway we're gonna hop on to my next for me to you and that is jujito had a review on youtube interview not a review by viz get to check into this dude's mind this crazy horror manga artist i, I, I mind with like his art book and everything coming out excited it's pretty cool i i actually haven't watched it yet but i do plan to get check this out but anyway next up we have yoshitaka amio for and it's his universe on paper by Ar archipel archipel and also all these links will be in the description so you guys can check them out this is actually a series about the Final Fantasy illustrator. This is so cool. I really like to see his art. I did watch this one. I like his uh, how he what his mindset is, like how he makes art, how he got into it. It's a really cool history and kind of tutorial how he does this stuff, what his mindset is, who he is as a person. It's really really cool. And last up, we have this is the anime movie I was talking about, The Wonderland. Expect a review. I watched this. I got a lot of things to say about it. It is ten dollars. You could I, from where I rented it, it was ten dollars. Rent it from any of these virtual screenings. For $10, you can watch it. It's basically you're just renting it from the theaters. It's pretty cool. And, I mean, I think the art's really cool. I, what really pulled me in was that the illustrated the characters, design was, I, characters designs were done by a Russian artist. I can't actually say his name because I don't remember it at the moment. But I think the character designs and the animation and the sound are really good. But I think the, I think the story and the character development are very, very lacking. That's all I have to say. I... Can, it's hard for me to recommend it like watch at your own risk i guess it's like 
it's just it didn't pull me in it didn't really blow me away it wasn't really like good in my opinion i think the art visuals sound i think anything that like visually like visual looked was really good and i think the thing that this series really really lacked was the story and character development but that's going to be more in a review that will be coming out later this week but anyway guys thank you so much for watching i do hope you enjoy i always appreciate you guys watching leave a comment like subscribe if you do enjoy tell me that you enjoy this kind of stuff and anyway guys thank you so much for watching and as always i'll see you in another video <laughs>